What's up guys, here's Diga AI and this week we are going to look at the best AI trends yet to come. AI has made tremendous progress over the last decade. GPU acceleration, progress in NLP and just this week DeepMind again made incredible progress on the protein folding problem. This is exactly why we are going to look at 13 trends that are going to keep us busy. On place one, digital ethics. The risks are great and the public is already distrusting AI massively. If we think about fake media, social media bots, weapons and some other unpleasant things like for example deep fake porns, you know, people are getting scared and this is exactly why we need digital ethics and why we need to address some questions and at least show that we're responsible developers and also make clear that it's used for the good of humanity. On place two, knowledge graphs. This 20 year old structure has made quite a comeback in the recent years, especially with the surge in interest of NoSQL structure uh, databases such as graph database more specifically, learning the structure has become more fun and more used throughout the scene. Especially at Google they have collected a massive knowledge graph and they're using it for all kinds of services from voice assistant to their search engine itself. Knowledge graphs are like the more conservative approach to learning. They're highly interpretable and you can look at them and somewhat understand what's going on between them. The basic idea is that of a data structure, pretty much of a graph, where each node represents an entity or a person in this case, and the arrows between them are the relations. This can then be used, for example, to distinguish a club in a golfing context from a club in, I don't know, I'm looking for a club in London, right? On place three intelligent apps, also called iApps. And I really wonder why Apple doesn't hold that patent, but in short, iApps are pretty much everything that you can sell under the umbrella term AI. So we're speaking big data, machine learning, AI, or just three if cases in a row. The big promise with iApps is that the, the longer you use them, the more they get to know you, the better their application fits your needs. Current example of such iApps are Cortana, Siri, Google Assistant, the healthcare app Ada, if you ever tried that one, or my personal favorite AI Dungeon. So this is AI Dungeon. It's actually quite cool. Um, it's AI powered. We go in to start here a bit of a classic custom world. And I prepared already a, third, a bit of a world for us. Basically what we do here is we give it a sentence or a bit of a text for our RPG adventure. And we are of course gonna start with I'm a YouTuber in a YouTuber world. I am likable and subscribable to your channel. I will be happy to do whatever you want me to. I can also make videos about other games as well if that is more of what you are looking for. So pretty much I uh, gave it this sentence here and the rest is what it came up with. Quite fascinating really. On place 4. Deep Neural Network Essex. Many years ago in ancient times neural networks were trained on CPUs. This was horribly slow and didn't work very well. Then some very smart people decided to train those things on GPUs, which is a bit harder to code, but once you're done, it's parallelized and it's way faster. Also, it's optimized for matrix multiplications, which is quite ideal for neural networks. Google decided to go a bit further with this trend and actually built a TPU, which is a tensor processing unit. This is a heavily optimized thing that especially works well with their TensorFlow programming framework for neural networks or anything machine related pretty much. And ASIC now is an application specific integrated circuit. This basically means that it's a chip optimized for a very particular purpose. For example, a GPU, a graphical processing unit, is nothing more than an ASIC that is just heavily optimized for graphical processes such as games and rendering. The trend here now with deep neural network ASICs is to build highly specialized chips for highly specialized AIs. So basically a Tesla car could be powered by a very specific chip that takes care of all its sensors and all the data that it needs. On place five, data labeling and annotation services. To learn from data, we first gotta understand what's in our data ourselves. So basically to teach a child how to cook, you first should know how to cook yourself. So for example, for a 
COVID mask detection service. So basically a uh, AI system that detects whether you're wearing a mask or you're not. You first have to pay some people to label images, basically saying, hey, in this image, this person is wearing a mask. Here is a person that's not wearing a mask and you personally have to do this for multiple thousand examples. This is exactly where data labeling services like Amazon's Mechanical Turk come in. Pretty much you pay people to label your data. This may be expensive people like doctors for radiology, notes or imagery, or just like normal folks like you and my eye that could tell a person that's wearing a mask from a person that's not wearing a mask. So step one usually is you upload a shit ton of your images and play. step two is you pay them some amount of cents for each image they label so they may have some spare time on one not and then yeah in step three you get your results and you're able to train your beautiful system. We are here on mturk which is just such a service as you can see here uh, requests can be formalized such as billing or um, Q&A things, emotions project, how does this video clip make you feel and then you get uh, a reward basically an amount of uh, money in cents usually uh, once you've completed that labeling. Yeah as you can see here we currently have 1122 uh, of such uh, things as well as this website, many other smaller websites are popping up, which are usually for a more specialized audience. You may think doctors or lawyers, which is quite useful depending on what kind of system you are building. On place six, smart robots. Humanity's last dream or its first, you decide. But basically since I was a little boy, I dreamed about robots doing all these mundane tasks for me. Cleaning, cooking, getting food and what not. Usually uh, you think of these things as humanoid robots, but smart robots are much more and they're quite active in the industry. So you see them uh, taking over the uh, factory lines of many products all over the world from furniture to cars. The market for smart robots is expected to exceed 23 billion by the year 2025, which is quite a lot of money given that currently there's not so much out there. Uh, currently robots in the personal space are mo mostly used for children, so these little toys you sometimes see and more interestingly robots for adults. While I personally would not spend 5,000 bucks for such a creepy little doll, many people do. However, sex robots can do much more for you than just, well, you know, they can also make tea. And as we can see here, this robot is really doing its best to, um, well, make put that back into the tea cup. I personally find this video quite fascinating because, yeah, it just shows the creativity of people around the world. It's hilarious to me and it's also pretty much the only video I can show you without, you know, making this video 18 uh, plus. On place seven, the like and subscribe button. It's really the most underrated thing out in the world. I mean, if you think about it, it just helps the YouTube algorithm out so much and also your favorite YouTuber. On the real place seven, AI developer and teaching kids. So the point pretty much is to get current developers and students up to speed in the most modern techniques and yeah, make them useless, uh, useful and contribute to the AI development as fast as possible. On the teaching frontier, I found the magician light from Dobot to be extremely fascinating. As you see, it looks cool it is cool it has a terrible soundtrack but I don't know I mean it's pretty much the Lego robot from tomorrow it can do all these kind of weird things here and you can completely program it with like you know these fancy drag and drop GUIs yeah I don't know what if I was a child I would love to have this I mean it may bring uh, very young developers to the market get them fascinated about the technology and yeah get creative as you can see here with their interface on place eight, AI governance. Pretty much what do you do once you've built your tool? So once your beautiful AI model is out in the wild, how do you actually evaluate it for things such as return on investment, risk, and a really big topic right now is bias. I mean, yeah, it can be quite troublesome if your assumptions don't align with those things. The real issue here is time. The time between when you develop your model 
and the time between when it is used. So for example, at the time of development, you may have assumptions such as, hey, um, there will be uh, multiple thousands of flights every day in our airline and customers will definitely wanna fly on these routes. But then, I don't know, five years later, something as COVID happens and all your assumptions pretty much die. The result is missed opportunities and terrible decisions based on ancient assumptions. In short, AI governance should at least include three things. First, AI model definition. What is the purpose of your model? Second, AI model management. So basically, who is responsible for it? Which departments are using it? And third, your data governance. So this is really important. Where does your data come from? What do you assume? How many data points? I mean, like, especially with the flights, for example, if you assume uh, 10,000 flights come in per day and your statistical methods need so many flights and there are only 20, what will happen? On place nine, augmented intelligence. Augmented intelligence is the trend of instead completely replacing uh, human workers, instead you try to assist them. So basically for a portfolio manager, this uh, may include suggestions. How can we build a custom CO2 free portfolio for my customer or for a healthcare professional? Hey, um, what possible cancer treatment drugs are out there? These things are extremely complicated and will always be. Decision support and AI augmentation will surpass all other types of AI initiatives. Gartner. While that most certainly is more a question of what solutions belongs to what categories, definitely a strong statement and I think it's a trend to stay. On place 10, neuromorphic hardware. So neuromorphic hardware has been designed with neural networks in mind from the beginning. Inside the hardware, neurons are emulated and interconnected in a web-like manner, so the buses pretty much. So what is the difference? So most current processing units are based on the so-called von Neumann architecture. This uh, pretty much 80 year old uh, architecture is pretty much perfect for most things that we do on our daily lives on our computers. This is also why uh, everything is built on top of it and yeah. However, this is also not so ideal for neural networks because they are pretty much testing the limits of this uh, architecture from uh, the von Neumann architecture and they need things like uh, decentralized memory. This is exactly where neuromorphic hardware sees an opening. Uh, pretty much they're trying to be more efficient and give us a bit more. Yeah, um, currently scientists around the world are uh, researching on this topic and this trend will definitely stay with us for a long period of time. On place 11, responsible AI. And I personally have to admit, I only realized after reading the book weapons of math destructions, how damn important it is. Especially as an AI developer, if you're developing a system that you yourself barely understand, how can anyone that is using it expect it to understand it? In her book, Kathy O'Neill described several cases where such system ran havoc and yeah, really had a negative impact. One example that really got to my heart was an automatic teacher evaluation system. So basically the system was developed by a consultant company that, you know, once the system was in action, was gone and nobody really knew what the scores were that system produced, which then led to good teachers in bad neighborhoods being fired. When those teachers objected to that score, nobody was around to tell them why they got such a terrible score. So pretty much everybody was telling them their great teachers, the students and the parents. The reasons were mostly because those students were from somewhat poorer neighborhoods and had problems which uh, children in richer neighborhoods never had to face. The reason was that this system was configured to check whether those students improved over the years. So basically, since they haven't, because they may have had an unwanted pregnancy or something like this, the system detected, hey, uh, your student's performance decreased. Maybe to 
because of factors that are out of your control. But anyway, uh, you're fired. Those teachers, those great teachers, were then usually hired in richer neighborhoods or private schools where such systems were not in place. Other areas she described were like jail systems and really all these uh, somewhat sensitive areas where we really should think twice about how you build such a system. It's a great read, I absolutely and highly recommend it to everyone. Let's have a look at a short clip from Microsoft highlighting the importance of responsible AI. We believe in the potential of AI to improve our lives in big and small ways. We need to make sure it's for the benefit of everyone. Yeah, and this is one uh, somewhat scary thing, right? If your group or your minority group may not be the economically, economically most viable group, uh, maybe they are just left out of the data set. For the first time, we're having machines move into roles that have been the roles of human beings. Might these technologies have inadvertent effects on people and society? Do they align with people's values, their ethics? We needed to think through the implications for our company. Responsible AI is the approach that we take to developing and deploying our technology, making sure our principles are brought to life and that it empowers everyone. And Yeah, so we see here their cornerstones are fairness, reliability and safety, inclusiveness, privacy and security, accountability and transparency. Well, it's really a hard topic to get right. I think uh, it's good that they're trying and that they have a dedicated team. Uh, having at least a, a global view on how their decisions impact other people. Is in on place 12, small data. We've all heard of big data and how you can improve a model by just giving it more quality data to train on. But what if no more data is available? If you're trying to treat a very rare cancer case or just a really niche product that only works in Swiss German, for example, with uh, way too little speakers. Probably no data set allows you to train your model on the real deal, so in this case uh, Swiss German. What would you do in such a case? The answer usually is transfer learning. So transfer learning is taking data which is remotely connected to your data and then first training your model on that data. And once you've trained your model on that remotely connected data, in this case German, you then fine tune, in other words, retrain the model again with the real deal, so Swiss German data. I see more and more papers coming out uh, figuring out how and in what order to train what kind of tasks to make these things work. Transfer learning is surely here to stay. On place 13, AI marketplaces. Sharing is caring and the AI community knows this very much. Thousands of papers are coming out every year just to share knowledge. What would be better than knowledge? Well, the complete weights of the trained models. This is exactly where AI marketplaces come in and let uh, developers sell their services or their models or their data to other people that may use them. Think about the vehicle inspection software that may be trained by a big uh, car repairer and sold to insurance companies which may not have such data sets. Luckily for you, I've made an entire video about that topic and you can definitely check that one out. The world is moving faster than ever and many trends that were trends years ago are now a reality. We just gotta keep moving and spinning that wheel of history faster and faster. I'm the guy AI and please like and subscribe. It would help me and the YouTube algorithm out so much. We'll see each other again next week and yeah, thanks for tuning in.